Hello everybody, welcome back to another Alan Holsworth lesson video and uh, today's the day I'm going to do Sphere of Innocence which is uh, not only one of my favorite Alan Holsworth tracks but it's also a song that uh, I've been asked a lot about. Uh, I was a little apprehensive at first because this song is actually tuned in fifths uh, not in standard so what that means is every uh, two groups of strings are a fifth apart. So the way Alan tunes this is that the high E is the same pitch as the uh, high, high E on a uh, guitar in standard, but then it's always, it always goes down. So you have, uh, starting from the lowest string, F, C, G, D, A, and E. Uh, so I decided the best way to uh, do this song is not to show you the, the actual chord voicings how I normally do on the, uh, uh, on the top uh, in front of me, but um, decided I'll show you the standard notation and the chord name. So if you're, let's say, a piano player uh, or you're playing with a keyboard player, you can kind of put these chords together to get the, the full sound of what's going on. Um, the reason why the song is a little tough to, uh, to do in standard is because the voicings are so wide. Uh, and when Alan played this, he only played it tuned in fifths. He never really... Uh, try to figure out how to put it in force like he did with looking glass or even a uh, non-brewed condiment. So uh, maybe from that you can take the the standard notation voicing and create uh, one that's similar to it, maybe minus a couple of bass notes or something, or maybe split it between the keyboard part, um, or even see the chord and come up with your own kind of version of it. So um, before we get started, I just wanted to talk about the way that the chords are kind of voiced and the idea behind the the way that this guitar uh, in fifths is tuned and the, the different kind of chord shapes that you'll see in the, and the voicings um, that are in this song. Uh, and I'll do that now. So one of the things that attracted Alan to uh, learn or at least write or play songs in uh, a fifth tuning is that it's completely symmetrical everywhere on every group of strings which is not the same for uh, a guitar in standard tuning. For example if you had a chord voicing on the bottom four strings on the E, A, D, G string when you let's say want to play that same exact voicing but on the middle strings uh, A, D, G, and B the fingering is slightly different and then if you want to play it on the top four strings the uh, D, G, B, and E once again, the, vo uh, the voicing is different. Here, no matter what group of string that you're playing, uh, group of strings that you're using, the chord voicing is always the same, uh, which is one of the things that attract out. And plus, the entire um, uh, the, you have more of a, a range with intervals. You get much wider chords with a deeper bass uh, than you can in standard. Uh, like for example, this kind of chord here, uh, like this, I guess. Kind of like a huge um, sus4 chord or at, least, at, uh, at 11 and then a major chord. This voicing on the guitar is uh, on a standard guitar would probably not be possible because the range of notes is so wide between these low notes and uh, this high pitched note. Uh, and that's one of the things I guess that attracted Alan. You could get deeper lows and some more wider intervals. So a lot of these songs that he does in, stand, uh, in fifth tuning don't have a lot of close voicings to them. They're actually quite wide as opposed to a guitar in standard where a lot of the voicings are actually very close together and, and very stretchy. Uh, so instead of thinking of them as let's say pitches, the, you can sort of think of the different chords as uh, interval grouping. So Let's, most of the chords in here are really four note chords. There's a few of them that are, that are more than that, that are five. But mostly they're just uh, four note chords. So most of everything is really the lowest note is the root. So let's take the, the fourth string for example. All right. Once you bar this, the next string is, your, is the fifth. So you have a power chord right here. And then the next string, the, uh, the second string, is a nine away from your root. So you have a fifth and a nine, and then up here you have a six. And with that, with that, and that's the same everywhere. One, five, nine, six. One, five, nine, six. It's always the same no matter where you're playing them. Uh, so a lot of the different chords that you'll see on here are usually the root and then the fifth, and then you'll have the rest of the extensions on top of it. So for example, 
we have that sus2 chord, 1, 5, and a 2, or a 9. If you take that and then you move it, move the, the second string up a half step, this is a minor triad. You have a 1, 5, flat 3. Now a major triad, sus4, and your sharp 11 is over here, 1, 5, sharp 11. Then with that top string is your 6. So um, let's say you have a minor chord, and this is your 6, a minor 6. If I move this up a half step, now I have a flat 7. So this is a, a minor 7 kind of voicing, 1, 5, flat 3, flat 7. And if you move those two uh, notes a, whole, uh, a half step up, you have a major 7. And then if you take this note up here, then you have a full major chord. And then here's your minor. So that's really the mostly the, the idea that's going on with this whole song is that kind of uh, interval grouping and different uh, chord voicings and uh, interval configurations with them. Uh, there's a couple that are a little strange but not, not too many. Uh, so let me start with the intro of the song. Alright, so the intro of the song is really exclusive just to the intro, although a couple of the themes here appear in other parts of the song, and especially in the solo, which I'm going to do in another video. Uh, I also got my little cheat sheet in front of me, because even though the chord shapes are, are kind of easy to see, uh, because I'm tuned in fifths, I don't know the actual pitches of all of them, uh, and what their what they're starting uh, pitch is. Uh, because the lowest note here is a C. And Alan doesn't actually use the sixth string at all, so everything is from the, the fifth string up here, or at least the lowest note in this whole song is a, is a low C. So, anyway, the first chord of the song is... You have this E7 sus4, got one, five, sus4, and then the flat seven. And then you move that sus4 to the... Um, to the flat three, so now you have a minor seven chord. E minor seven there. Then that moves it's the exact same thing up to A. Then it goes to F, but now instead of it being minor, it's major. So now you have this major seven sharp eleven, F sharp eleven I should say. And then you move the sharp eleven to the major third. So now you have an F major seven. And then you go back to the minor 7 motif uh, on D. So you have a D7 sus4 to a D minor 7. So that whole intro. Alright, and then on to... Uh, the next part, now, the rest of the song I consider like verses, and they're all slightly different uh, and have different variations, so I sort of have names for all of them, so we got to go through each one, the next one being the most important. So this one, next part, I would consider the main verse. So in the main verse, why this is so important is because sort of like the second half, or merely like 85% of this main verse, gets repeated uh, frequently throughout the different sections. It's usually the intro has something a little bit different with it. And as I go through them in other verses, I'm going to assume that you already know how to play this part, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just going to sort of uh, breeze right through this. So definitely pay attention to, to this one here. So, after the intro part, the song starts out with a C sus2. We got one, five, your two, and then the uh, root again, the octave. And then your, uh, your grace noting to a major third, so it becomes a C major chord. Then you're going to here, which is an A uh, seven sus2. One, five, two, flat seven. Then a B flat major seven sus two. One, five, two, and the major seven. But here you're gonna play. 
and then you bec it becomes a major seven chord. And then you move all the way down to uh, 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 F major seven sus two. Uh, that's usually like the first part of it from this chord, this next chord on gets repeated a lot. So this is the section that's really important. So now it's the same kind of thing as the C part, but now it's a D sus two. And you go to D major. Then from here you go to an E6 sus four. And then you move the sus four to its uh, major third. So now you have a just a regular E uh, six chord, one six major third, and then the octave again. Uh, then after that, you have this F major seven sus four, one five four your sus four and your major seven, a G seven sus two, one five two flat seven. Seven sus two, and then this weird chord, which uh, I don't particularly like the name of this one. You have one five sharp eleven and a six, so I guess this is a B flat six add sharp eleven. Uh, I th that's really the best name I think for it. And then from here you have a D seven sus two one five two and then the flat seven. So that part, starting on D, now we have an F minor 6, 1, 5, flat 3, uh, 6, G flat 7, sus 2, to uh, B flat major 7, sus 2, flat major 7 sus 2. Now this is a full C major chord. This is as low as the, the song goes. We have 1, 5, major 3rd, and then root again. Then you move the, the root and the major, not the root, but the octave and the major 3rd up a whole step, and now you have something like a C sus 2 add sharp 11. And then you have a uh, D6 sus4, 1, 6 sus4, and then the octave again. And then E sus4, 1, 5 sus4, and then the uh, octave again. Uh, F sus2, then you go to G sus4, same sort of voicing as before. And then you have a B flat major 13. And you tap uh, the B flat on the top, and this is built one, six. Uh, here's your nine. Here's your major seven, and uh, I guess that's your uh, major. Yeah, it's your major third, and then you're tapping. Okay, so that whole section from the D part is really important. That gets repeated a few times. I'll play that whole section for you a little slow now. So that's the main verse. The next part after that, uh, I sort of consider an alternate verse, and uh, you'll see why. Now this I consider an alternate verse because the first beginning part's different, but then it repeats like the main verse. The intro to this part also comes back at the uh, very end of the song as sort of like the outro. So the, this is the most annoying chord in uh, the song if you're playing it in fifths. It's an A minor add 11. 
So you have an A minor triad here, then you have the 11 here, and then also the, uh, the root again. So it's this chord. And then you have here a D major 7 with an add sharp 11, 1, 5, sharp 11, E major 7. Then here you have this chord, which I would say is like an F sharp minor triad with an add flat 13. You can also think of this as a D major 7 by itself, a different voicing of it, but I think it makes more sense as a minor chord with an add flat 13. And then that same uh, major 7, add, 11, add sharp 11 voicing as before, now it's an F. Then it's the add flat 13, minor flat 13 chord again. But now it's a D sharp minor, add flat 13. You can also think of this as a different uh, voicing of a B major 7. And then from here it goes to the, from the D sus 2 part in the previous main verse all the way and it changes a little bit different. So the only unique part from this, I'll play it again, this is the A minor at 11 part. And then on and on. Uh, and then the next part, uh, I consider a verse variation where it actually, there's a, it starts off the same but then takes a little bit of a, of a right turn. Uh, I think this part is unique only to this verse, and we're going to go over this now. So this verse variation starts off with the same uh, few chords as the main verse, and then transposes a little bit and then goes into left field into something that's only unique to this part. So it starts off the same way with the C sus2 to the C major, A7 sus2, B flat major 7 sus2. It's my favorite part in the, in the whole song. So instead of it going to um, F major 7 sus2, it goes to F sharp major 7 sus2. And then from here, it goes into an A, uh, F, sorry, F minor 11. So you have an F minor 7 right here, 1, 5, flat 3, flat 7, and then you're adding the 11 on top. Well, let's play it like this. And then that major 7 sharp 11 voicing, A major 7 sharp 11. But then what you do is you take your uh, finger off, and now you have that weird 6 add sharp 11, you have the 6 on the top. And then from there, it goes to um, just an A minor triad. A minor. And then G6. One, th uh, five, major third, six. And then an F minor triad. One, five, minor third. And then you have your uh, minor third again. But then what you do is you take uh, the A and you move it to A flat or G sharp. Because an F sharp minor add 9. So uh, that whole section, I'll play again. Starts off the same way. And then. Oh, very pain in the butt to play. Now it sort of goes to the um, main part, the, the intro, but it's a little variation of it. So it plays a D flat 7 sus4 to a minor 7. Then it goes, does the same thing on G flat. And then uh, 
D major 7 and sharp 11. That voicing at 1, 5, sharp 11, and then major 7. Uh, and then it now goes to uh, a transposed part, which I guess I call like verse, uh, uh, tra transposed uh, main verse. But it's different because it ends a little bit early and then it goes to the solo. And uh, I'll take care of that in this section. So I would consider this uh, the transposed verse variation because it starts off basically the same way uh, as the main verse, but the first four chords are now transposed a half step. So instead of starting on C, you're now on C sharp, sus2, and you go to C sharp major, and then um, A sharp 7, sus2, B major 7, sus2, sus2 part, uh, but then it changes a little bit at the end, so I'll, I'll go through it. And now at this part, instead of going up here to D, he goes to uh, a B, uh, B7 sus2. starts and we'll do that in the next video. Uh, after the solo it goes to uh, kind of like the culmination of all the verses. It has the transposed part but then it does it goes back to the D sus2 part and and it plays the whole thing instead of stopping sort of halfway like it did right before the solo. Uh, so let's take care of that now. So the transposed verse intro, uh, but it plays the full main verse after that. So it all sounds complicated, but they're all different sort of like mashing together of all the different verses. Uh, so it has the transposed beginning with the C sharp uh, sus2 to C, a sharp, A sharp 7 sus2, B major 7, B major 7 sus2 to G major 7 sus2. Then it goes back to the D part, and then this continues all the way to the B flat uh, major 13. difference. Once it gets there, uh, Alan's actually tapping the sus4 at the with his uh, on the high E string. So this becomes like a B flat major 13 and 11, or I think actually no, I'm sorry, it just becomes a sus4 because you're replacing the three. So it's a B flat major 13 sus4. And then from there, I might as well just finish it up. We go into the ending. So it starts off the same way as that alternate verse, but then uh, finishes. So it starts off the same way with the A minor at 11. To the, uh, the major at, um, at sharp 11. Then the F sharp minor uh, at flat 13. To the F uh, major 7 at sharp 11. Then it goes to... The, the D sharp minor add flat 13 as we did before. But then, this is where it changes. Then it plays a full D6 chord. 1, 5, major 3rd, 6. Uh, major 3rd on top. And then the last chord you have is a, the, it's a sus2 sharp 11. C sus2 sharp 11. And then you take the sharp 11 and move it to the major 3rd. And then you have a... 
see a nine chord. And that's the end of the song. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Once again, uh, it's pretty confusing, but you see a lot of the same things over and over again. So I'm telling you, if you really learn that main verse, uh, you'll be able to, to get the rest of the song pretty easily. Uh, then next time we'll do the solo. So, uh, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions, comments, always post them. I try to respond to all of them. Uh, as, as I said before, I think that's important. Once again, I also don't have a Patreon. I'm not looking for money. I already work enough. Uh, but I do this for fun and for the love of the music and hopefully that you guys can learn something and maybe uh, keep the music alive and do your own covers and versions. So, anyway, thanks again for uh, tuning in and staying with me and uh, I'll see you next time.